interestingly, you know, when uh, we look at rewards, we can define it into four categories. Uh, plain vanilla compensation, uh, benefits, uh, work-life practices, and uh, careers and development. Now, uh, you know, mo most of the times the word rewards is synonymous with compensation, and there's very little that is interesting to report on compensation. Um, the you know, one one trend is that uh, even though inflation has stabilized, um, salary increases continue to be double digit, driven by an acute shortage of talent, which is pushing up, um, you know, re uh, retention, um, pushing up attrition. Sorry. And uh, a continued focus on growing jobs in the country, which is again putting pressure on compensation budgets. So that's one uh, large trend that we see that salary increases continue to be double digit. Nothing's changed significantly in the area of variable compensation either, whether it's short term or long term. We've heard a lot of companies wanting to go the variable way, but on the ground, we're not seeing much change in terms of the data that we're seeing. So. Really, I think the changes are happening in the non-compensation area. And so I'm going to ask Preeti to comment on some of those. Thanks, Shanti. So uh, in terms of benefits, clearly benefits are coming under the lens now. So people are, companies are sitting up and saying that, okay, let's see what benefits are. What is it that we can do differently? How can we innovate in benefits? So clearly the innovation journey has started. A lot of the innovation last year that we saw was around parental care in some shape or form. Whether you talked about uh, enhancing the maternity and paternity leaves, whether you're giving support for child care, etc., a lot of it was to do with parental care. So, in line with uh, you know the fact that there isn't much changing in the pure compensation field, we have tended to keep compensation as hygiene and focus on some of the other elements. So, a couple of the programs that uh, you know we re really want to talk about is benefits and how uh, you know um, every we have uh, three generations of employees in our organization, and what we've done is. Uh, offered to the youngest generation experience in terms of benefits. So what we really mean by that is in earlier days, you know, uh, if, if anybody achieved a milestone uh, or, you know, uh, won an award, it was always a cash voucher um, or, or something like, a you know, a watch if you completed uh, X number of years of service. We've turned that into an experience voucher, so which is very interesting for a 20-something. Um, incidentally, I got a you know, a similar voucher at another event, I didn't use it because I, I, I don't want the choice. I'd rather have money in hand. But the youngster, 20-something, really appreciated that they could go, you know, scuba diving or watch a movie, uh, you know, in a fancy place. So I think that was one of the changes we made. Uh, like I said, we also looked at differentiating based on the generations. And the other, uh, the second generation was, I think, uh, I don't know whether it's a reward, but, you know, I... Uh, it's uh, something to keep uh, you know a person uh, a valuable person in the organization connected while on maternity leave a uh, person was on leave for maternity leave for 6 months we made it a point to stay in touch with that person every month uh, keep the person involved informed of everything that was going on uh, you know and uh, made the person part of the whatsapp group so they stayed connected with what was going on in the organization uh, a third, you know, which was uh, really targeted uh, at our high potential employees was that we created two types of programs, a six month rotation program uh, to you know, try and work in a different geography or, uh, you know, in a different line of business for select group of our employees. And the other one was for our most senior people an opportunity to be part of a very elite group of people who uh, you know were sent to the US and are part of a leadership development program where you know they're in touch with the CEO of the organization so uh, when i talk of benefits for 2017 clearly uh, three elements or three aspects that companies are focusing on is as i said innovation innovation is done in the backdrop of cost you can't just ignore cost completely. Three key elements are innovation, cost and communication. So these are the three things that companies are trying to look at. And also understanding that in an era of personalization when N is equal to 1, you can't just even talk of segmentation. We're going a, a step further and talking of personalization and not just segmentation. That would 
that is the first element the second one is about branding so it's no more me as an employer talking about what i am doing but it's more about my employees being brand ambassadors for me to talk about what we are i am doing as an organization the third one is on the access so a lot of lot of aspects that uh, have low engagement is because of not just because of the design but the delivery mechanism also of the benefit so accessibility is another ar- angle where companies are looking at ways in which they can use the 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 digital era very effectively to give better access based on again the the age group of the employee whether it's a millennial or any other uh, you know gen x obviously the access levels is are going to be different or the need for the access levels are going to be different so that is what we are saying that is changing so uh, what is challenging in the rewards landscape is again uh, again as i said if you're talking about innovation how do you get more innovative what do you do in innovation do you depend upon just the market data do you just look at the benchmarking report externally and and just focus on designing your benefits based on that or do you look at internal uh information uh, a very uh, uh, something that we've all see, always seen and we've seen that you know encouragingly more now is uh, companies being very comfortable going and asking employee perspectives which used to be something that they used to be a bit wary of in the past but that is changing so you employee in employee survey or employee perspective is one one way is employee surveys or focus group discussions another way where Uh, there's a lot of latent hidden data which is not uh, which is not something which is very very open for people to use is uh, analytics around utilization of the some of the benefits that they're talking about especially voluntary benefits so what is the level of utilization you're talking about what is the way in which you can do some kind of better analysis so that's something that companies are realizing that they need to go beyond just the market benchmark and employee uh, surveys etc I think one of the biggest challenges is uh, you know how do you uh, balance the organization's focus on cost with the employees focus on wanting more all the time what is that you know that's going to keep the employee satisfied and happy uh, it never seems to be enough right whatever one gives it never seems to be enough so uh, what is it that, that that it takes to keep our employees but on the uh, at the same time the leadership uh, has a right to ask so what's the benefit why should i invest in xyz program uh, in the organization can we to preeti's point go beyond market benchmarks and do a fair amount of analytics internally to determine the roi of our rewards programs and i think our data and systems today are not geared towards that and uh, i mean beyond data and systems i think our thinking is not geared towards that so i think that's the biggest challenge in rewards Uh, when we we just do any kind of a dipstick survey with, with a group of people from hr the biggest challenge that they have is on demonstrating the roi on the uh, benefit spend so what i would think is that s- certain initiatives uh, most of the benefits that you talk about would have leading and lagging indicators all that we talk about in terms of level of engagement in terms of managing attrition managing productivity are typically lagging indicators i mean you don't see you don't launch a benefit program in one one quarter and by end of that quarter if you expect that to be an evidence that that gets very difficult but there are certain leading indicators very simple leading indicators are if you have a voluntary program what is the level of sign up you have what is the level of engagement that you've been able to get so that itself is a very good indicator of the the way you've designed the program and the way you're delivering it because if the access to it is easy then sign up is obviously better the second one is about as i mentioned about uh, branding and branding about is about employees becoming your brand ambassadors so how many of your employees are actually going out either in through any of the social media whether it's a linkedin whether it's a glass door anything and talking about the the uh, benefits of the company is offering so that these two are very clear indicators of your company doing differently mm-hmm.